You've annotated your genome in Patrick, and one of the main reasons to do this is that your private data now becomes integrated with all of the public data in Patrick, but only you can see it. And now you have access to all the analysis tools. You can build trees, you can run the variation service. There is a number of things that you can do with your genome. You can blast against it. You can do proteome comparisons. But let's see what your genome looks like when it's in Patrick. So another way that we haven't shown you how to get to your genomes in Patrick, you can click on this down arrow next to workspaces and then click on the My Genomes tab. And this will show me all the genomes that I have annotated in Patrick. And you can see I've annotated a lot. And as you scroll down, suddenly you see these genomes with the funny sign signals in front of them. This indicates that this genome is shared with other users. So if I wanna see this particular genome, I can click on the checkbox and the vertical green bar becomes populated with a number of things that I can do once I've clicked on that. And also beyond it, it shows me information about the genome. So I can download it, I can copy it, I can see the genome, or I can add it to a group. I want to go see this genome. So I'm gonna click here. And this is the home page for this particular genome that I have annotated in Patrick. Now notice that this there are some antimicrobial resistance data for this particular genome. Not all the genomes annotated in Patrick will have this. This is part of a machine learning effort we have where we try to find um, large groups of deno genomes that have uh, antimicrobial resistant data, and then we run our classifiers on them so we can predict whether what uh, antibiotics they would be resistant or susceptible to. Down this side, it shows you the information about this genome. Here's what it's named, here's its size. Under organism information, we have the genome ID, what, you, what it was named when it was submitted, the taxon ID, the status, it's not a complete genome, meaning it's not closed and that all the um, chromosomes are represented by single sequences with no ends uh, instead of ACTG. This is whole genome shotgun, which means the genome is in pieces. When appropriate, we also run genomes annotated in Patrick through MLST pipelines, so we provide that as well. And it tells if we have uh, uh, antimicrobial resistance data for it, which you can see here. It tells if the genome is good or not, what the core and fine consistency are. It tells me who has access to that genome of my friends that it's shared with. Notice that there's no isolate or host information because this is a private genome. But if I have, if it's my genome, actually one of these people has the designation of that genome. If it's my genome, I can provide that information. This tells me the number of contigs, how big it is, the GC content, and how many genes, and any phenotype information and other information about that genome. So we've already talked about the antimicrobial resistance, and it looks like it's predicted by our machine learning efforts and the classifiers that this genome is resistant to these genes and susceptible, I'm sorry, to these antibiotics and susceptible to these. We also provide the genome features, which tells how many genes there are. Now, if if there was um, RepSeq annotation or GenBank annotation, remember this is a private genome, but if it was a public genome, you'd be able to do a direct comparison of the genes, the classifiers that are predicting um, antimicrobial resistance, tRNAs and rRNAs, you'd be able to see those head to head. Protein features, we break that down into the hypothetical proteins, 
the proteins with functional assignments, meaning we have a pretty good idea of what they do. The proteins with EC number assignments, EC stands for enzyme commission, and so those are proteins that are likely to be involved in pathways. Proteins with gene ontology assignments, proteins that are in pathways, proteins that have subsystem assignments, proteins that are in uh, the local fam the uh, genus specific families and the global families. And also we have a third protein assignment of functional families. We also break down the specialty genes. Any genome annotated in Patrick is blasted against um, databases of virulence factors, antimicrobial genes, drug targets, transporters. So we have all of that data, which we'll get into in a minute. Each of these are hyperlinks when you can see that it's underscored when you mouse over it, that that would take you to a table specifically about those genes. But let's walk through the tabs on top. When we do have AMR phenotype data, not all genomes in Patrick will have it, but you can see it, the genome name is here and it tells the antibiotic and it tells whether it's predict whether it's susceptible or resistance. And then if it was measured in a lab, like if we have public data with this information, you would see that here. But this is telling me it was measured by our computational methods, which is the Adaboost classifier. And it's the computational method. Phylogeny. Now don't be confused. Your genome is not going to be on this tree, but this is just going to show you the amount of data that we have. We tried to do all the high quality genomes for um, the particular uh, genus that we're looking at and higher because this is an order level tree. It goes down and down and down. But the purpose of this is you could go in and do similar genome finder and find out who, which reference genome your uh, genome is closest to. And then you could even find it within the, this tree to be able to see who it's closest to. Genome browser. If you click on this, we have a JBrowse view that shows you Patrick annotation, RefSeq annotation, and the reference sequence. Now, there is no RefSeq annotation because this is your private genome, but it's showing you genes on the forward and reverse strand, and you can see the different contigs too in my private genome. Mousing over any of these will tell me the name of the, the gene, but what's one good thing about the ref, this browser is I can drill in, and drill in and drill in until I start to see the six frames and the translation. So that's pretty a good thing you can do if you want to look at start sites or want to see if a gene is pseudogenized, you can figure out where it broke and why, if it was a frame shift or a stop or stop or start or a new stop codon. The circular viewer, now this is pretty good. I like this. It's showing me genes. Here's the, um, the key here, but I've got genes on the forward strand, the reverse strand. Here are the non-coding genes, which are the RNAs, so you can see where those are. Um, antimicrobial resistant genes, virulence factor genes, transporters, drug targets, GC content, GC skew. You can also upload your own data to this or even add a custom track if you wish. And um, it's a, you can download it and export it as an SVG image. I sometimes see this in people's publications that are, have used Patrick. If you click on sequences, this gives you the information about the specific context. This is one of the few places in Patrick where I can easily go in and select a given context and download that information on that context, that DNA FASTA file. 
If I'm in the genome browser, I can look at those individual contexts, but this is one of the few places where I can actually grab that sequence. So I could go to the genome browser, I can also see what genes are on it. Features are all the genes. And so this is telling me the gene ID. If it had a rough seq locus tag, I'd see it here. If it had a gene symbol, I'd see it here. This tells me what genus specific family, protein family this gene belongs to, which global family it belongs to, and what name it is. And if I were to click on this, if I wanted more information, it would all be here beyond the green bar. But if I wanted to, I could go directly to the feature page and look at that. And once again, of course, you can get the FASTA data. I could do ID mapping. I could see if it's involved in a pathway or I could add it to a group. Specialty genes. In Patrick, we blast uh, at all the genes from a particular genome against these databases for virulence factors, antimicrobial genes. If you want to see what those are, you could tick, click on the filters here. And we, this one was blasted against databases for anti antibiotic resistance, drug targets, virulence factors, or transporters. And these are the source of the databases, like VFDB, um, CARD, those are well-known databases, and DARO, which is the GenBank Antimicrobial Resistance Database. It tells you the classification, the antibiotic class, and the antibiotics. For example, if I wanted to filter on these, I could click on this with the dynamic filter and see all the genes in my genome that had hits to that particular database. My gene ID, the source ID at GenBank, what it's called, and how good the blast hit is. Protein families. You could look at, um, at the genus specific families, or you could look at the global families. We have a tutorial on using protein families and using the protein family sorter tool. This is just specifically for this one genome. And then pathways. You notice it says pathways may take a few moments to load. But if there's a particular pathway that I'm interested in, I can click on that pathway and view the pathway map for that particular pathway. And it would show me in my genome what genes have these particular EC numbers. And those are colored by these green colors. The legend is over here. I'll show you what those are. So that's another um, fun feature that we have in Patrick. You can also go to subsystems. Now this truly takes a long time to load. So I've loaded it here earlier so you could see it. Subsystems provides you with a um, subsystems overview. And I often see this in people's publication of this map. It also, if I were to click on the subsystems tab, it gives me this information about these subsystems. Truly, this is an extremely valuable resource that we have in Patrick that's showing you the, the this has been, we have a, several, um, several experts in uh, biochemistry that have gone in and found the genes associated with different uh, classes. I can click on this and so you have the superclass, the class, the subclass, the subsystem name, genome count, this is only one genome, and how many genes it has, and the roles are specific roles. And it's also telling me, can my genome do this or not? Is it active or is it maybe active? Looking in these different categories. You can also click on the genes, which also takes a while to load which I've loaded here, 
and you can see the different genes that are associated with this. This is a very valuable um, source of information in Patrick. Transcriptomes and interactions in our private genomes, we won't see that, so we won't talk about that. I wanted to show you one other thing you could do in Patrick, um, other links. We went in here through My Genomes, but if you're at your jobs page, and you go into and filter on annotation and look at a particular genome, you also have these direct views, that these hyperlinks that will take you directly to the genome landing page, the gene page, and the genome browser. So if I click on that, it's going to take me directly to my genome that I annotated in Patrick. So there's a lot of information, a lot of tabs. I encourage you to step through them all. Oh, and one more thing, notice with this one, I can, because I own this gene, it's not shared with anyone, I can go in and edit the information about the gene. If I know the host name that this was isolated from, um, the PAFID, I could add that and it would appear. I can save that and then that information would be saved here. So I encourage you to play with it, to look at it, to delve into it. It's a very valuable uh, assembly of information.